Now, it was a deadly attack that sent shockwaves across the country. Nearly four decades ago, a bomb exploded in front of a Paris synagogue, killing four people and injuring dozens more. The suspect, Lebanese-Canadian national Hassan Diab, was extradited to France. Back then, the case was thrown out for a lack of solid evidence. But just last week, 38 years after the bloodshed, new evidence has emerged with a French appeals court reopening the high-profile case. Shirley Sitbon, George Yazbek and Julie Dungelhoff have today's Focus report. On October 3, 1980, hundreds of people celebrated Shabbat in Paris's Copernic synagogue when a bomb rocked the street. We saw the flames over there. I rushed to this side to have a better look. The door was blown open. Then I saw the body of that poor boy, Philippe Bissou, in pieces. The young man riding his motorcycle, a journalist, the concierge of the hotel across the street and a chauffeur were the four people killed in the explosion. Corinne Adler was 12 at the time. That night, she was celebrating her bat mitzvah. We came out of the synagogue and saw this horrible scene, people lying on the ground, some wounded, others dead. There was blood, broken glass, cars on fire. It was a war scene. Within minutes, police evacuate worshippers from the site and begin their investigation. The only physical evidence they find, the motorcycle on which the terrorists hid the bomb. I spent hours protecting that motorcycle to preserve it, so it was taken to the lab. With the motorcycle's serial number, we contacted the builder, the importer and the store that sold it. At the store, investigators find a registration document the suspect filled out with the name of his hotel. At the hotel, they seize another sample of his handwriting in the register. Witnesses describe a man resembling this photo fit. Of course, he made several mistakes. In those days, Middle Eastern terrorists knew they risked nothing in their home countries. So they did not pay much attention to security during their missions. French intelligence believe the cell that carried out the attack traveled from Lebanon through Spain. They find in Rome a stolen passport used to make that trip, carrying the name of Hassan Diab. In 2006, anti-terrorist judge Marc Trevidic traces the suspect to Canada and begins a long process to extradite him. But Diab swears he has no connection to the case or to the Palestinian group suspected in the bombing. The Canadian judge says the case is weak. Hassan Diab shouldn't have been extradited. The Canadian judge resisted the process, but France applied strong pressure. In 2016, the case makes a U-turn when new witnesses emerge. Several former students say Diab took his exams at Beirut University around the period of the attack. A court dismisses the case, but the prosecution and victims' lawyers appeal the decision. In this case, there is no full evidence in the traditional sense. There are several converging presumptions which can give a conviction that Hassan Diab is one of the attackers. Victims want a trial, saying this could dissuade assailants from carrying out new attacks today. Charlie Hebdo, Nice, the Bataclan, justice must put an end to all of this. If courts carry out trials and hand sentences, maybe this will dissuade others who would decide not to attack. A line of reasoning defense lawyers denounce. They say Diab is innocent and in being harassed for political reasons. The prosecution is influenced by politics. It follows French public opinion, which has been deeply hurt. The prosecution may also want to show unwavering determination to fight anti-Semitism, exactly the opposite of what France's prime minister did 38 years ago, when he made this historic statement right after the attack. 
this horrendous attack that was designed to target Jews on their way to the synagogue hit innocent French citizens. A statement that shocked many. Meanwhile, then-President Valéry Giscard d'Estaing remained silent for days. A few months later, he lost the election to socialist François Mitterrand, who on the day following the attack sat in the synagogue at the front row.